Welcome to Entrepreneur Nines. I'm John Wist. And I'm Bonnie Mace. And we are two Enneagram Nines who took the big leap into the world of entrepreneurship at a similar time. And this podcast is a space where we're inviting you to laugh and learn with us as we work to build businesses with soul. This is episode 42. 42. And it is our return to an interview. Yeah. First interview. Which we have not done in a very long time. Very long. Um, But I'm really excited about it. Uh, So these are uh, two new friends of mine. Yeah. uh, Who I've met through a coaching group that I've done through Art of Documentary. Mm -hmm. And um, their names are Jared and Garrett. They, so they are in, in my industry. They're videographers and photographers. And so um, it's an easy connection for me, but I learned through doing the coaching group with them yeah. that they had uh, found out what their Enneagram numbers were uh-huh. because the person who did their rebrand had them figure that that out, which was kind of a fun yeah, little I loved that. tidbit. Yeah, yeah, I know you're excited about it. Um, so we thought, yeah, let's let's have them on. Let's talk about it a little bit more. So um, yeah, so this is our conversation with uh, Jared and Garrett. Two twos, episode 42, season two. Boom. I wanted to say that. Uh, I'm sorry. I should have let you say that. Okay, here we go. All right, we're super excited today to welcome Jared and Garrett from Motion Creative Media. Thanks, guys, for being here. We got two twos with us today, and so we're going to dig into some some Mm two-ness in a little bit here. But So Jared and Garrett are from East Tennessee. Uh, These guys own Motion Creative Media, which provides photography and videography for active lifestyle businesses in East Tennessee to inspire love for active living, encourage genuine connection, and propel growth for businesses and community, which is an awesome uh, about tagline, guys. I just wanted to point that out. So, Thank you. Uh, that is straight from Brianna Fillers. I, was gonna s- I can take zero credit <laughs> other than copying and pasting. I was going to say, I know you guys went through a rebrand not that long ago, but it's uh, it's pretty yeah. it's pretty good. And you've got like your, your mission and vision plastered all over the front page of your website too, which is cool. And so I think you guys are do an awesome job kind of telling people where you, where you live, like not just East Tennessee, Mm -hmm. but like, like what your, what your mission and vision is for, Uh, for who you're going to serve. So, um, that was the whole goal of the rebrand. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we had none of that prior to, well, you did great. And Brianna did great. Thank you. So, (laughs) uh, so yeah, so we're gonna, we're gonna dig into, um, just what it's like to be an Enneagram two business owner, entrepreneur, <laughs> entrepreneur, duopreneurs. Duopreneurs is, uh, 10 cents. We're entrepreneurs. We're entrepreneurs. <laughs> entrepreneurs. <laughs> there we That's go. right. That's right. <laughs> entrepreneurs. Um, yeah, so the same ring, but we'll, we'll allow it. Yeah. We'll yeah, allow we'll, it. We'll, yeah. I had to have something. I had to have something. It's all good. It's all good. So if, if you're curious about digging a little deeper into the Enneagram two, we just did a podcast the uh, the the episode before this was all about that, so mm-hmm. you can go back and listen to that. But we're just going to start first of all with you guys just introducing yourselves to us a little bit more, just giving us a little bit more about your entrepreneur journey. How did you guys get started into motion creative media, into videography, photography? Um, we'll go from there. Hey, can I do a can I can I do a, a dad joke first? Oh, hundred percent, yes. Because you got okay. So time. All right, sorry, I missed this, this is part. part of the brand. I missed this part. So Jared and Garrett co-host a podcast called Faith and Frames, and it starts every single episode starts with a dad joke from Jared. So mm-hmm. so Jared hit us hit us with one. All right, all right. What genre are national anthems? Mm. This is a tough one. What None? genre? Genre, yeah. National anthems. Yeah. Hit me. Yeah. yeah. Country. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's <laughs> obvious, right? Yeah, you got it. You know, that's yeah. obvious. Yeah. As oh, soon as you said it, it, it was too good. There's yeah. country. It was too good. Yeah, was too that was pretty. There's a preview into Faith and Frames. If you're really downtrodden and looking for something to listen to, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have nothing better to do with your life. You can tune in. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, don't. Well, we'll come back around um, to that too. We'll talk a little bit about your guys' podcast too. So. <laughs> so so Garrett and I, we have known each other. For basically all our lives uh Mm -hmm. we garrett is like two years younger than me and he lived grew up across from one of my grandparents and so after church on sundays we would always go to my grandparents to eat uh and post lunch we would have nothing to do so we would go bug garrett across the street and get into all kinds of 
mischief. Um, Kickball, wiffle ball, the works. Nice. We started into the creative journey through photography. Uh, it's funny because, and I, I'll never get tired of telling this particular story because like everything we do is like learn, make, repeat and you make yeah. mistakes and you get very little right. Uh, so this was our first thing I had been asked to take, or I had been asked by a aspiring country artist in our town who wanted to do some promo stuff for his, uh, music. Mm-hmm. And we thought we were shooting a sizzle reel, which is like 45 seconds, just a little hype. Yeah. Uh, like, hey, this is what I do. This is what my stage presence is, et cetera. No, this is we... a real national anthems. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> well, I knew that I needed some help. And Garrett, I had been seeing him take photos. And so passed and was like, hey, Garrett, do you care to, to help me shoot video? I don't know if you know anything about video. I don't know anything about video, but here we are. Mm. Uh, we show up and we ended up with a five-page shot list from this guy's <laughs> manager. <laughs> Uh, at 5 a.m. At fi- yeah, we oh. we realized at that point it was fives at five. Oh my gosh, we are not shooting a sizzle reel, but in fact a full blown music video. Oh wow! wow. Uh, so ten hours later, <laughs> in a very crisp October uh, evening, we completed and wrapped on our first production, which was a music video. Oh, yeah. Wow, guys, that started tri- weddings. It was like after sixteen that. hours. We we got done at like ten p.m. that night. That's wow. true. That's, That's trial it by was, fire right yeah. there. <laughs> it there was there was a fire a literal fire it was exciting it was um, exciting nice yeah we then moved into weddings and then mm-hmm. covid happened mm-hmm. and uh weddings got postponed actually a couple of them canceled so probably a blessing in disguise there um but uh yeah now we find ourselves in the commercial space nice. and you just read our tagline so that's kind of what we try to do yeah so tell me a little bit more just about like cuz you guys have been through a process you know, even in the mm-hmm. past, like six, eight months or so of even just redefining, you know, who, who you serve and the type of people that you want to serve through your business. So t- just walk me through that just a, a really quickly, that transition, especially once you moved into the commercial arena, like into the active lifestyle kind of genre. Yeah, go ahead, Garrett. Sweet. Um, you know, so through weddings, we had this this uh thought whenever we swapped over to the commercial side that because we were able to shoot weddings successfully that that would translate into the commercial space and that people would come in droves asking us to shoot their commercial what we realized is weddings begat more weddings yeah Mm -hmm. and so when we first jumped over into the commercial space we were kind of lost i guess like most businesses are um we shot anything and everything that came our way whether it be fitness you know, music videos, automotive shoots. Uh, I remember doing a few of those uh, local small business commercials. It was kind of like a hodgepodge of everything. Mm. And the first the first year to year and a half that we were shooting together, which we were still shooting part time yeah. um, until January of 21 um, was when I went full time in May and 21 is when Jared went full time with this. So it was a little bit disorienting um, because we were shooting anything and everything not really known as as anything except for their cw media the the video guys that was our our previous name um so it's kind of disorienting that that process we learned through brianna who jared went to school with um they they both were doing i think it uh Mm -hmm. related classes uh in college they formed a relationship um and later on brianna started doing the branding thing we met up with her and she said you know you guys have to start specializing and, and really putting out what you want to do <laughs> and, and honing that in it. And we all hear that in business. Uh, I've always been told that it's a smart thing to niche. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a, that's a big word, especially in videography. And when I think about it too, I know at least for the previous industry that I was in, we were very specific. We did one thing mm-hmm. and, and one thing only. So it made sense that it would translate into to videography. Yeah. So when we met, met, met with Brianna, um, that's when we really, figured out, no, we enjoy active things. We enjoy fitness. We had, we had had a couple of gyms that we'd shot with at the time. We enjoyed construction, Mm -hmm. uh, surprisingly, which Jared worked for a construction company uh, at one point in time. 
we both love the outdoors. Uh, we, we love the area that we live in, the mountains. Mm -hmm. They're beautiful. So we really wanted to hone in on that. And even though that wasn't super duper specific, it was specific enough to where Brianna then had something that she could work with. Yeah. Um, and that's where the motion creative media came from and inspiring a love for active living through video and business that moves your business forward. Awesome. Nice. Very good. We, yeah. We, I mean, we talked about this some last year cause we both niching. went through several shifts <laughs> in, mm -hmm. in direction, just mm -hmm. as you, you know, you guys know, as you learn over time, like what you enjoy and right. what, you, and yeah. the kind of content that you want to create, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you just start to figure out like, Oh, there's, there's people in that area already who need that too mm -hmm. so yeah. yeah yes yeah absolutely and one cool thing too i'll note as even more of a dialing in of the process whenever brianna finished with us you know our our target demographic was active living active lifestyle which encompassed multiple things the cool thing is it's now even evolved a little bit which i think is fun um, it's more of like a sliding scale now so we've been able to hone out the fact that okay we enjoy our fitness clients, but we don't want to continue to take on new fitness clients. We would rather focus more on like the blue collar construction work. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, we're still dialing it in, which is cool. Brianna told us that would happen mm -hmm. and it is, it's, it's been happening. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, mm -hmm. since you keep bringing up Brianna and I know that she's the one who introduced you guys to the Enneagram, mm -hmm. yep. let's yes. take a little pivot. We're going to talk about Enneagram for a little while and nice. then we're going to kind of wrap it all up with just kind of some things you guys have learned, a little bit of wisdom that kind of combines the two. So you're both Enneagram 2s, mm -hmm. which, mm -hmm. Bonnie, just give us a real quick 50,000-foot overview mm -hmm. of Enneagram 2. Enneagram 2s, which these guys can attest to more than me, are very motivated <laughs> by needing to be loved. But it doesn't necessarily feel like for an Enneagram 2, like, please love me, please love me. It's like I am going to earn my place in your life by making sure that I can serve you and be of use to you and take care mm -hmm. of you. Cause if you, t if I take care of you, then you'll take mm -hmm. care of me with love is sort of the undertone of a two motivation. So mm -hmm. you guys are going to be like very freaked out about, um, feeling useless or when yeah. people tell you I'm good, I don't need you. Mm -hmm. Then it's like yeah. panic. <laughs> what do I do? Right. They say they don't need me. <laughs> and a two in an unhealthy space is going to be like, actually, you do need me. <laughs> like, let me take care of you. And a two in a growing space is going to be able to say themselves like, I, I do not need to be needed to be loved. I'm inherently right. loved for who I am, not what I do. So that's the that's the big overview of motivation for a type two. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You guys I mean, didn't even squirm that much. That was, yeah. that was pretty good. No, I mean, you got us figured out. <laughs> we listened to the last episode. So yeah, we, we, we heard you, uh, basically I felt like you were, uh, in the NSA in my phone or something. <laughs> uh, I was like, dang, dude, she's like <laughs> describing me right now. Bonnie knows it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So I think the natural question that came, that came up for both of us, because you are both twos who are working mm -hmm. together in a partnership, do you feel like you get each other? Like, are, are you, do you feel like you're on the same wavelength a lot or do you guys have times where, you know, you see things differently and, and sometimes that takes a little bit more, you know, working through or conversation in order to get to where you need to be. Yeah, I would, I would say, I mean, obviously we've got different, past so like multiple uh variables have have shaped the person that we are today and so yeah mm -hmm. uh there are times i would uh, to take the cop out i would say both um <laughs> yeah. like there are times when yeah we're we're like we can finish one another sentence and it's it's we're thinking the exact same thing and then there are other times where you know there is a bit of headbutting um and it's mm -hmm. it's one of those things too like it happens sometimes on set and it's funny because uh in aod which is how we know you john yeah um yeah. In the Create and Earn module, Mark and Mike are shooting a piece for a fitness client. And they had BTS for the entire uh, episode and everything. And it was funny because, like, it was funny to see them, like, argue, mm -hmm. so to speak, on set. And I was like, yeah. oh, well, at least it's not just Garrett and I, you know? <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. I think to add to that, though, the one thing that I noticed, at least, Jared and I both have a few things that we, like, absolutely agree on like I'm going to say almost hundred percent of the time, number one, like we always want a great product. So the, the goal 
typically is very similar. I think where we where the headbutting would come in or, or debates or wherever is just in the approach. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jared Jared is very detail oriented, likes processes, loves to have things in order. Um, then we make the product great. Where I differ is I, I dig kind of the excitement part of things where I don't know what's going to happen. And that excites me. I, I enjoy like, let's, let's just start shooting and see what happens. Yeah. And it's going to be good or bad. Like there's, there's only one of two things <laughs> that's going to happen in my brain. Like it's going to be great or it's going to suck yeah. either way. I'm excited for the journey. Yeah. Okay. So this makes me, this feels like a good place to ask the question. Cause I think I already have a guess about your wings just from that <laughs> little, little tidbit. <laughs> Um, so tell me, let's let's tell for the listeners, what do you think your wings are, which is like the default neighbor number you tend to borrow from to get things done for your motivations? I believe I'm a wing three. Okay. Yeah. And I'm a wing one. Yes. <laughs> I could have called it. I should have said my yeah. prediction, is, but I didn't. Yeah, that, that yep. totally makes sense in the two approaches because, yeah. you know, the type three is like the achiever and they just want to get things done quickly and like churn it out. Right. So they don't necessarily Mm -hmm. care about cutting corners as long as it gets it done. Whereas a Mm -hmm. type one is like, there is a right way to do things. Yeah. Yeah. So it's fun to kind of hear that come out already in your um, Mm -hmm. approach to a shoot. Again, the goal is the same. The the goal is we both want to have great results Uh, where we differ more often than not is the approach Mm -hmm. um, is the approach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 That's, I mean, I, and I, there was a, there was a time where we had a call because like mm-hmm. you guys said, we met through AOD and we've just been having some like side, you know, side calls with a few of us. Right. And that was one of the, it was an approach to even not even on set, but addressing a potential client. Right. And like yes. you guys had two different ways that you thought about going about the next step for that. And, yeah. you know, that was kind of that, that indication that you like at the core right yeah. like at, is that when we tipped you off yeah down? that was it that was it so like but <laughs> oh man. yeah but like at the core like you got your motivation is very very similar or almost dead mm-hmm. on the same almost all the mm-hmm. time like you you guys mm-hmm. wanted the same thing out of that that next interaction with that client right which was right yes to to actually for both of you what i heard was like you were concerned that you were not going to do what they they wanted right mm. in in a mm-hmm. way like you were concerned that if you chose one way like they might not respond well you know yeah mm. right whereas That's tricky you know whereas if you went the other way you know maybe they wouldn't respond well to that either so it was kind right. of this give and take for both of you it felt like between what's the right path forward so that they'll respond mm-hmm. back in a positive way um yeah, correct. you know and so correct. that was kind of interesting yeah that was my first tell uh oh, yeah. for you guys <laughs> that was your tip yeah off. yeah that was yep i remember that call yeah um so that was really you know I, I but i think that's cool how like again the core motivation for you guys tends to be the same but you yep. just have different mm-hmm. ways of approaching how to get there so that brings me to kind of the core motivation which is to to serve others and to yeah. and to mm-hmm. give them something that serves them well especially in what we do right is creating right. content and giving people something that is going to enhance what they already do. So mm-hmm. how does service for you guys kind of come up in your business? Like how do you see that leaking through everything that you do? It's well, so I actually, it's kind of funny now that you, you mentioned the service word uh, and serving even before we started doing photo and video, like I was in it and yep. so I was in support all the time. Mm-hmm. So like I was literally always fixing problems. Nobody ever mm-hmm. comes to you and says, hey, my computer's working great and has <laughs> for three weeks. Thank you. Like it's always something that's broken. Yeah. And I enjoyed the the process of troubleshooting and figuring out and serving and helping. And so Garrett was in a, a service industry prior to this mm-hmm. as well. So it's funny how like even before the space that we're in today, we were still, you know, ultimately helping people. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And so it was the funny part too. Like when we were rebranding with Brianna, the word she kept saying, so what do y'all want to do? And I was like, look, I just, at the end of the process, I don't want someone to breathe a sigh of relief that 
thank God this is over and I don't have to deal with yeah, these guys again. Guys are gone. <laughs> I want them to wow. feel yeah. served, like fulfilled, yeah. like yeah. we took care of them in some way. Oh, I love that. Uh, yeah. So yeah, that that was, and it's like, okay, how do we monetize that? You know, we, we have <laughs> yeah. mortgages and things. So. <laughs> well, and it does go back. I mean, Jared did it in IT and, and I was in the service industry, industry as well. I started off out of college in the funeral industry. Wow. And so I was, you know, I was helping people through some of the toughest times in their life yeah. whenever they, whenever somebody dies. And again, not knowing, especially not knowing the Enneagram back then, it, it makes sense as to why those were industries that I was drawn to. I went from the funeral industry into insurance. So at that point in time, I was helping people take care of, you know, the funeral burden beforehand. Mm-hmm. Um, so there, there has always been that innate yearning to serve and, and I just didn't, even realize why. Yeah. Yep. That's mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah. Um, now that you've made, and, and I see it too in kind of your shift or your continued shift and your movement now, even more into like blue collar industry, mm-hmm. like industries that maybe don't get the kind of attention from right. even our industry, like yeah. videography mm-hmm. that maybe they need to have or deserve to have and i see even that move continuing to happen in that direction for you guys yep. in the sense of service there too yes i mean it's it's a bit of a grow where you're planted type thing like here in our mm-hmm. area um there there is a lot of trade work mm-hmm. um and so the 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 big issue that that garrett and i see is that I graduated high school in 2009. I think Garrett was 11 during that time period. You never like, it was, it was always looked down upon to go to like Mm Votech. Uh, like, Oh, you're one of school. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, You're one of the Votech people. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. because we had been like programmed, like you've got to go to school, you've got to get a degree or you're never going to make it in life. Da, 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 da. There was this big push to university. And, Mm -hmm. uh, the, the inverse of that to a lot of kids was, well, trades are you know less 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 for whatever reason yeah uh and so yeah it's there's a there's a plethora Mm -hmm. of it around us and then two like i feel a bit of a burden to to help shift and change that mindset you Mm -hmm. know it's like no i have a full-on chip on my shoulder for it you know i think me and jared both being we were both athletes in, in school so we're both very competitive um i love when when people say no you can't you can't do something because you're not, you know, educated enough because you're not X, Y, Z enough. I love that challenge. And again, going back to like the previous industry, it was very goal driven, Mm -hmm. you know, very numbers driven. Like you had to hit numbers, you had to exceed things. And like, for me, that's fun. And it's, it's no different of a challenge whenever somebody says, well, you know, the blue collar industry, it's, it's nothing because X, Y, Z reason. I'm like, no, we, we can turn it into something like I, I can turn it into essentially with the video world, a a big production. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I guess that's just me like being the, the let me fix you mentality. (laughs) (laughs) The the industry didn't ask for that, but that's something that I I have a a desire to do. Yeah. Yeah. And they're kind of like the thankless. So this is something about Enneagram two is too, that you might carry around, whether how your awareness of it is the thing that varies is like you want, there is a desire to be thanked for how you're helping, for how you're serving, Mm -hmm. right? And Mm -hmm. now I'm hearing you say the industries you're serving are the thankless industries. Like Mm -hmm. nobody is driving around on a Brit. I I recently saw on LinkedIn, one of you posted a photo shoot from like a construction on a, on like a overpass or something. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's a new bridge. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, I've never in my car driving over an overpass thought, you know, a yep. crew of dudes and maybe women like probably, yeah, okay. let's be, I let, yeah, have yep. created this bridge for me to drive on. Like, <laughs> I'm just pissed when I hit a pothole. Like, you know, <laughs> so, Most people yeah, are. so I yep. can even hear that in yeah. like the straw towards the industry that you're going to is this like <laughs> thankless service industry. We will make you thank them. That's yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you're bringing in this level of appreciation that you want to feel and like giving it to this industry that doesn't often <laughs> receive it too. I, so that's just, I don't know if you guys have put that together for yourselves yet, but I like, I even just hear that in how you're kind of continuing to niche down. Yeah. Yeah. We're trying to hone it in. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Um, I feel like this is a good kind of segue to maybe some deeper mm. thoughts because 
mm-hmm. know, we're talking about how you guys are, are seeing different industries and seeing what we would maybe like one of the reasons why we started this was we wanted to make sure we didn't lose ourselves yeah. in the yeah. process of building a business. You know, we wanted to talk about right. the hards, um, the easies, the hards and everything in between. And then like really address like how we were caring for ourselves and our own mm-hmm. bodies and souls and minds as we were trying to navigate what small business ownership looked like. And so mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. think even as you guys are talking about the ways that you're looking out for other people, right? Like you're looking out for other industries, even as a way to make a living, right? As a way to make right. a living, you're mm-hmm. looking out for other industries. But how do you guys see yourselves looking out for yourselves? Like in in the process mm-hmm. of this business journey, like how are you honoring yourself? How are, you know, like what are some ways that you, or are you, or do you need growth? That's tough. <laughs> That's tough. Like literally I, went, ew, did you yeah. hear that? <laughs> I, I would, tough. yeah. Uh, whew. I, I would probably say that myself is is very low on the priority of of the totem pole um and and it was in i think it was in your last episode you guys talked about like taking care of of self and and rest Mm -hmm. and and the needs being met and stuff and and i don't know i i think because of the service thing and i you know garrett and i are both fathers and and husbands Mm -hmm. it's Mm -hmm. yeah like i'll i'll figure myself out later Mm -hmm. you know I, i I'm so far down on this list of priorities. I've got two mouths to feed that are, are, are that can't feed themselves. And I've got a mm-hmm. wife and, you know, all of these things. And so, yeah, the, the, pro, the provision side of, of fatherhood and husbandhood, if that, I don't even know what you would call that, but like the, the burden there puts <laughs> my, my, my priorities and, and needs oftentimes lower. And I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm honestly okay with that. Garrett, how do you, how do you feel? <laughs> um, welcome, the, the stealth thing. Welcome to your therapy session. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the stealth thing is weird because I I've actually had opportunity to to experience some of like the negative sides of of you know being the two. Um, Bonnie, you actually mentioned it in the last episode, and I, I took note of this because whenever you said this, it it absolutely hit me like a ton of bricks on you know response to okay are we going to have a detrimental response to things or are we going to have that growth moment Mm -hmm. um you know in the previous industry you know you had mentioned you had mentioned that with twos like we want all the awards we want all the accolades and it's not really like the trophies that matter but it's the love that's associated with that Mm -hmm. and unfortunately one of the downsides of being a two especially with the wing three um is I got to a place to where in the previous industry, you know, we had achieved so much. We were, you know, getting the awards, getting the trophies. And for me, again, I associated that with, okay, the people around me appreciate me. They love me. I'm I'm helping them build, helping them grow. Again, sacrificing, you know, my my building and my growth and preparing myself for when that turns south. So when it did did turn south um, and I left that industry, I had a very destructive response. Mm. Um so much to the tune that literally the the physical you know trophies and awards i remember walking into my office one day and i was just sick just absolutely sick and i i remember just looking at those and i was like these mean nothing mm. anymore you know because the the things that i thought were associated with them were in my in my mind's eye fake at that point in time mm. it's like 10 years of work 10 years of building people 10 years of growing and then those things that were attached to those trophies had, you know, turned on me. And I just remember like throwing them all in the dumpster and I was like, I'm done with this, you know? So so I actually had, I've had the ability in the past to see my destructive tendencies, um, especially with the two wing three. Now, now that I know what that is, like I can look back at that experience and say, I know why I reacted that way. Mm -hmm. It's, It's, you know, innately who I am. So yeah, I think now I am trying to learn about myself that, okay, even if you get the accolades, even, even if you get the awards, like you don't have to attach yourself to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you don't have to attach and you don't have to attach other people to that. You know, you don't have to attach their love, their appreciation. So I've had to come to terms with the fact that no, not everyone will appreciate the things you do. Not everyone, you know, 
we'll give you a trophy. We'll pat your back to tell you that you're great and all that good stuff. And I have to be okay with that. Mm. And that's tough. Like that's very yeah, tough that's hard. Um, with me being the two W three, because three is the performer, mm-hmm. you know, the, mm-hmm. the three loves that type of stuff. And again, going back to past, like I've, I've always been an athlete. I'm a musician. Like there's things that are built into my core that desires that feedback on our performance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when that feedback is negative or when that feedback doesn't happen, I have to be okay with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's tough. I mean, what you guys are saying here is like, that's the uphill choice. And so for every Mm -hmm. one of us, we have like the natural reaction and then there's like the uphill Mm -hmm. choice. And so the natural reaction for you is somebody tell me I'm loved and the uphill stretch is I am inherently loved. Like, you know, Mm -hmm. and, and it's different, you know, for type nines, um, like we 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 kind of have this like sense of mattering but it doesn't mm-hmm. we don't associate it as much closely cuz i'm hearing some things that i think our type 9 listeners are going to be like wait maybe i'm a 2 cuz that's a specialty of a 9 to be like wait maybe i'm um and so uh, <laughs> something else yeah maybe <laughs> like i'm something else yeah. yes i mean yeah. that's also one of our superpowers the shape shifting um so hearing you kind of say like we we like the appreciation mm-hmm. but we don't necessarily associate with our worth and how people value us we associate it with like do i matter in this room Mm -hmm, like Mm -hmm. is it good for me to be a part of this room or should i just you know kind of like the homer simpson meme where we like kind of sink back into the hedge um so that's kind of the difference there of like i love me some positive feedback you know oh, and yeah. personal affirmation right. do you kind of feel the same way yeah who doesn't I, yeah yeah <laughs> well like, there are yeah. some people who don't Everybody care yeah. Yeah. yeah some people yeah. like genuinely just don't or they're like okay whatever it's right. great right like i don't, mm-hmm. don't care but right. um i really do but yeah it's for that like am i making you mad like when you give me positive mm-hmm. feedback then i know you're not mad at me and you're not gonna like cut me off yeah. from your life right. right so yeah yeah that's like that that's hard things making yeah, that stretch. Sure. Just I, I mean, I resonate with that yeah. a lot because I feel like going from what I, you know, from my previous ministry job into my own business mm-hmm. was very much the same or, or similar journey as yours of like yeah. feeling. And I wasn't even on staff for the whole time, but mm-hmm. I was at that particular place for over a decade, you know? Oh, wow. yeah. And when you walk away from it, and kind of feel like the things that you did do, especially once I was on staff, like the things yeah. that I did build were kind of just falling away. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's that's when you start to go. And then for me, it was less that like, a, you know, something um, had like a like a award or something had value. But it was more of like Bonnie saying, like, did did my time there not even matter? matter yeah. right? right. Like, did right. my presence in that place not even matter and then mm-hmm. and yeah working through no it did right like for the time that i was there mm-hmm. like my presence did matter mm-hmm. for, yeah. and i'm not there anymore and so now i can no longer control <laughs> right <laughs> yeah. uh, right you know what stays and what goes right? right and so um i think yeah it's it's interesting because i think it's a very similar situation but it's just kind of the yeah. you know the what, what we're walking away with too could also be vi- viewed as very similar which is mm-hmm. we're again the way we're walking there is a little bit different or the mm-hmm. way that we're arriving at right. those conclusions is a little mm-hmm. bit different also. and the way we're going to have to I like think, process the pain will be different yeah. so sorry go ahead yeah hey, well i think john you you where you differ at least from what i'm picking up on is is you were worried about you know did my time there matter mm-hmm. did it make a difference for like i would say the overarching process yep and where I was destroyed was, was like, I felt as if I no longer mattered to the people, Yeah, you know? Yeah. So it's like my, my 10 years of, of service was just nothing to these people. Yeah. And again, that was a very destructive path that I took in reacting to that, mm. um, which is why I try to work on that now, even, even within, you know, marriage, even within my family, uh, with my kids, like I have to remind myself, you know, I, I know they love me, yeah. so yeah. I don't have to, I don't have to constantly do those things to like get a feel for, yeah. mm-hmm. um, you know, do they love me? I, I know they do. And I have to, I have to remind myself that they do so that I'm not relying on them to give me those pats on the butt. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's good. Which was hard. Like even going back into yeah. school and, and, a, and, and athletics, like being a two one, I, 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 in a lot of ways I am a perfectionist. And so mm-hmm. like, I, 
I, I see the way that I think is right. This is the way this needs to be done. And I'm going to strive to do it that way. And like some of the biggest buzzes, I guess you could say that I had as a kid were like when my mom or dad would say, Jared, I'm proud of you. Mm. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like just hearing those words and, and, and even when it didn't exist now, looking back, like I can, I know they were proud of me, but to verbally hear yeah. son, I'm proud of you. Mm -hmm. Like, Oh man. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that was, that was quite the high. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's yeah. really good. Well, I want to kind of turn, I want to combine the two a little bit now okay. and just kind of get a little, a little bit of maybe wisdom from you guys. You're, oh. Since you started to learn, <laughs> you have wisdom, Jared. Come on now. Uh, <laughs> Jared has much wisdom. Yeah. Um, as you started to learn, you know, and, and you can hear it like in our conversation right now, like you, I, I can hear how much you guys have learned about yourselves through right. the Enneagram through learning more about your your core motivations and your wings and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But I want you to kind of like combine that a little bit with your your entrepreneur journey now and just kind mm -hmm. of come back around to that and say like, you know, like what's sorry, I just dropped my phone. Uh what's what is what's you know, what have you guys learned in the past two years, right? So it's been about two years. What have you learned in the past two years, you know, about yourselves or about about running this this company um whether it's doing it together or you know if if somebody else is in a similar position to you guys where you know like we need to take a pivot or i need to take a pivot out of what i'm doing now and really start doing mm -hmm. the thing that i want to do you know or serve the people i want to serve you know kind of what have you guys learned in that process that you feel like could benefit somebody oh lord uh <laughs> Dang, what a can of worms on a Monday. <laughs> you guys, uh, uh, he's a journalist background. Yeah. So journalism you're getting background it. is gonna come out, guys. <laughs> what have I learned? That that implies that like you've reached a destination of learning it at some point. <laughs> and it's not a continual process. Uh well at, at this at this, you know, mile marker on your journey, mm -hmm. you know, you guys have you, you have come to a destination in some sense because you've arrived at a place where you now feel confident about who you're serving and why you're serving them, Yeah, you know? And I think that that's, that's something to be celebrated and something I think you guys can kind of say, okay, like from this mile marker, looking back, you know, what did that take for us? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, so, so yeah, I, I guess, I guess one of the biggest things that, that, I have learned slash continue to learn is that, and I never say niche, but for this enunciation, it's the riches are in the niches. Mm -hmm. um, the riches are not in the niches, so <laughs> yeah. that doesn't work. Uh, <laughs> but the riches are in the niches. And so that's really scary mm. when you are starting something mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you immediately are like alienating potential buyers, right? Like yeah. in the video world, yeah. in the photo world, it's like, oh, if I can show that I can do everything then everyone will need my services mm -hmm. right. and yeah sure that's true but the issue is is like if you're not speaking to someone specifically you ultimately mm -hmm. end up speaking to no one right yeah. no one Which sees is tough, you as a two we want to serve everybody <laughs> right right exactly and so it's 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 taken a long time for Garrett and I to to get to the point to where we are in regards to like, okay, you know what, that going it. No, we are. This is what we do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. And this is this is this is our path forward. Um, and I guess now that you mention it, I can kind of see it with a lot of other businesses like here locally. Uh, one of the most common businesses out of high school for 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 males specifically is they they start a lawn mowing business. Mm -hmm. Yep. They do. And it's like, uh, so, but I see them very quickly start to do this service, this service. Mm -hmm. this, I'm like, no, 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 no. I, th you're, I, I understand because I've done it and I I, I, yeah. I get it. But like, yeah. no, you need to be the best. There's plenty of yards to mow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You need yeah. to be the best mower <laughs> instead yeah. of like trying to be the excavation and everything. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. if you're everything. We have big yards in Tennessee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's. <laughs> Yeah, I would say that is the scary part, but truly once you figure out what you want to do, where your passion lies, uh, yeah, if you just dive into that niche, it's it it really is better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. 
That's great. Yeah, and I would, I'll speak to kind of the inner workings of like our business because partnerships, me and Jared, you know, obviously we're business partners. So those can be interesting in their own right altogether. But I think one thing that's really cool about me and Jared being twos and then specifically him being one and me a three, I feel like we're a complete like juggernaut as far as like approaches. It's like if, if we have somebody that is more of like the, the detail oriented client that needs, you know, processes and needs, you know, bullet pointed emails, like we've got the guy, yeah, he's yeah. the 2W1, you know, if you need the guy that's a little more off the cuff, like we're going to fly by the seat of the pants and see what happens. Well, you've got that guy too. Mm-hmm. He's the 2W3. Mm-hmm. Um, but the fun thing, and, and one thing that I've learned, at least on the inner workings of me and Jared is I have to be okay with looking at his approach and saying, okay, we can, we can rock this as long as, you know, as his business partner, he understands that I would also like to try my way too. Yeah. Like those are things that I think, um, and that goes for any partnership, but especially because we differ on the wings because his mm-hmm. wing is detailed. My wing is not detailed at all. Mm-hmm. Um, and he'll, he'll get a crack at this. Cause I always say, well, my blanket answer for everything is I take, I think it takes a little bit of everything to, to make, you know, whatever business works. So if, if we're going to go detail and process oriented, great, let's do that. Let's also do the other thing too, because I think, again, that just makes us a juggernaut yeah. um, at that point in time. So that's what I've learned, at least on the inner workings of our partnership is like, it's just the, the goal's the same. Yeah. The goal's the same. Uh, we both want to serve. We both want things to be great. Um, the vanity side of me wants things to look great yeah. at all times. So it's like, we can do all of that and still have that same goal. Yeah. That's awesome. That's really good. Was it, was it in last episode when you guys talked about delegation or is this branching into some other, <laughs> uh, delegation is another episode. <laughs> well, so, so, so it's funny because, and, and, and I can even go back to, to like when we, I've remodeled two houses and, I'm a very visual person. I'm a very visual learner. If I can yeah. see a good YouTube video on how to lay floor, I can do it. Yeah. I may be slow at it and I'll have, I'll learn and, and make mistakes, but like I can do it. And so like, I like to do a lot of things myself. Like I mm-hmm. really enjoy knowing how to do a little bit of everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and so like when we were remodeling our house, I've got a big family on Saturdays, a lot of them would come over and they'd say, okay, Jared, what do you want us to do? I could not tell them to do anything <laughs> because right. I knew I would have to go back behind yeah. and fix and, fix it. and I'd rather just do it myself, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, whereas Garrett's like, no, I'll pay a plumber. I'll pay a, a you know, like <laughs> let's, let's let these guys do it. And I'm cool with yeah. the results. Yeah. Uh, so there, and I even think, if I have to fix it, like I'm okay with that. I, I, I want people to have their opportunity to, if they're going to do great, let me, let them do great. If they're going to do bad, well, I'll have to deal with the results. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's that's on you delegation, <laughs> delegation. And it's you. I mean yeah I can see different ways of like I can see you guys just like coming at it with your wings a little bit but I will say yeah. as far as delegating in general I think it's just how you view like your role in it so if you feel like well this yeah. is a service thing that I should step into so I hear Jared like I can do this I can see t- I don't have to put this on somebody else and mm-hmm. I also don't want to get mad at them later if I have to like clean it up. Um, mm-hmm. And then Garrett's like, well, no, they, this is how I'm like potentially fostering somebody else's yeah. skill sharpening. Mm-hmm. So in yeah. a way it's service. But you also, if they screw it up, I can also hear Garrett saying, I'm not going to call them back and say, come fix this. You're just going to take care of it and be like, you did so <laughs> because good. Because at the end of the day, I'll probably know how to fix it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, like just that uh, – avoiding put being a burden on someone like you yeah, guys are just approaching it, it. Yeah, yeah just in a different way um entirely that, so yeah. that even presents itself in a lot of times in communication like garrett will mm-hmm. 10 times out of 10 pick up the phone and call you and i'm like yes. yeah, they may be in the middle of something dude i'm gonna text them <laughs> yeah like, yeah. Them. they can they can reply at their convenience <laughs> yeah and we'll end up at the same we'll end up at the same you know, yeah. uh, destination. Yeah. That's so Same funny. with like emails and stuff like that. I'm like, no, I can, uh, they can yeah. reply, right. read it Jared on loves their emails. time. You know, I love those emails. <laughs> yeah. so yeah, it's, it's funny. Garrett's like, let's just call them. I'm like, dude, what if they're doing something? You know, <laughs> yeah. did you even check to but see it, if they could take a call? You know, 
it's funny though because that that even goes back though to just the way that we've been shaped even as twos we've been shaped differently right. because of the different service industries yeah. it you know jared communicated primarily through email with my you know insurance background i was I'm people sorry. to people yeah. i i love people i love in-person events I love going to people's home. Like I just love the people interaction side of things. Yeah. That for me, it, it's almost like a high yeah. that I get through conversations. Yeah. yeah. It's just, it's, sense. yeah. I mean, I mean, it's been fun getting to know you guys more over the past, you know, like six months or so since we were in the coaching group together. But I think it's just mm-hmm. been fun too to continue to get to know you guys and like through, even as you're talking about this, it's like, well, Garrett's usually the last one to respond on like a what, on like a WhatsApp. <laughs> yep, uh, I'm horrible with group, group yeah, chats, yeah. emails, all that stuff. So it's just kind of funny, but yeah, I mean, cool too to see how like you guys are understanding both yourselves and each other, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, and hopefully that's leading to just even like a, a better partnership for you guys mm-hmm. too. So yeah. that's mm-hmm. awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. We understand how to deal with each other. Yeah, yeah. for yeah. sure. For sure. Yeah. Well, and you guys have known each other for a long time. I mean, Bonnie and I have known oh, each yeah. other for it's a long time now. It's John. a long time now. It's like, oh my gosh, not as long as you guys. Yeah, not as long as you guys. We didn't I go mean, to school together, but yeah, yeah. it's yeah. at least ten Almost, years now. Well, f- like fourteen, I think. Whoa. Yeah. Oh wow. Congrats. Well, no, 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 not. Th- I moved here in two thousand eleven. Oh, so. that's true. Okay, okay, never mind. Getting so, close though. Thirteen. Probably it's a long time. Though. Yeah. Good yeah. 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 So yeah, but when you when you know each other that long though too, like you start to understand, you know, like just the best way to work together to communicate with each other that kind of a thing too yeah. so yeah. yeah and to not let john just be like it's fine i'll do it <laughs> yeah that's been my because <laughs> john and i like for you guys if you guys butt heads and get into stress mm. space like you're going for that eight right and you might end up getting a little ruthless because right. a type eight and you know like you're going to borrow the type eight tools and stress mm. and then for us enneagram which is confusing y- yeah right <laughs> yeah so you have to watch out for that it's just like i can feel yeah. my stress rising i can feel myself wanting yeah. to like hulk out on you um, yeah, but then yeah, your description of it in the last episode, Bonnie, was spot on. Because again, I've I've had those responses, yeah. and those are the responses I'm actively trying to avoid. Yeah. Um, now now that I'm conscious about it, um, I'm actively trying to avoid those because I have had those. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, what, my, it's not a fun feeling. Yeah, might I suggest just going outside and screaming into the abyss for a moment, <laughs> and then a, a reapproaching? Because you're gonna have to let it out somehow, right? But like. Yeah. John and I in stress, we're just going to worst case scenario in our own head. So I think any time that like, even back to when we worked in ministry together, if we disagreed about something, no one mm-hmm. but John and I knew about it, even though we were in group yeah. meetings together. And it'd be like me circling back around or John circling back around to be like, so you're on a different page, <laughs> yeah. like quietly yeah. behind closed. Doors. So you're in a different page. Yeah. Like, yeah. what are you thinking? What's going on? Yeah. Like, yeah. let me take this off your plate. I know you're just going to try to mm-hmm. like absorb it all but i could tell right. like you were off everybody else in the room was absolutely clueless would mm-hmm. you agree with that yeah. like yeah. whenever we just like it just is ve- it was a very like non-confrontational non-explosive like almost yeah. vibe yeah. instead of like uh oh they're fighting oh we just get very quiet yeah we just get very quiet yeah. and like we it like kind of simmers you know yeah. and it just kind of sits yeah. there um and that's, you know, again, you just got to learn how to See, I, I actually like that response, though. I like that because, again, <laughs> for me, negative is confusing um, yeah. because I'm like an internal optimist. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I suppress a lot of negative. Mm-hmm. And when that stuff builds up, you know, my goal is for stoke levels to always be. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, like, I like high stoke levels. So when things are negative, I mask those with optimism at times, but then when they build up like on the individual level, yeah. again, very confusing, very not fun. Yeah. 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 It's funny. Like I'm on the, uh, well, I'm, tr- I'm, I'm, I'm under watch care to be a deacon at the church. Right. Mm-hmm. And so it's funny when, when our deacons meetings you mentioned similarly, like there may be discussion, you know, we'll call it right about a topic or a thing that the church needs to do or wants mm-hmm. to do or whatever. And like, I can sit there and I can say, they're not understanding right now. He's, he's, he's not on the same page here. Yep. And like, yeah, I'll just, mm-hmm. I'll just shut up for the rest of the meeting. And then I'll like pull the guy aside at the end. And it's like, so walk me through this. Like I could tell you're not <laughs> yeah. you're, you're like help, help, help me get here, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And yeah, it's, it's a, another thing that's a negative is, and it's something that through like the love language quizzes and mm. tests and stuff like that, like I've learned is like, God gave us two ears and one mouth. Mm-hmm. 
need to do you needed to use them in that order, right? Well, I, I immediately, when someone tells me a problem or they're telling me a story, they're venting to me, I'm, I've already well, got the it. fix <laughs> and I'll spew that out before I'm even yeah. like, they're even finished. It's like, yeah. just listen, listen, I, I've got this. Just do this. Mm-hmm. Everything will be great. And, you know, a lot As of times we're just, like, no, it's not great. Let me fix it. <laughs> yeah, they just, you know, they just, they just want to get it out. They're not probably even looking for a solution mm-hmm. but my stupid right. brain's like listen if you just listen to me i've got the fix <laughs> yeah. you know i've got the fix you. and you're gonna love me after i fix you yeah. there you go yep. Yep. that's it yeah that's it it's awareness it's hard it's hard like i hate to see someone struggle especially yeah. if, mm-hmm. if i do feel like yeah i can help yeah yeah and as a two you do feel like you can help yeah right yeah, whether you actually Better can or anybody. not, you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we think in our own mind that we can help everybody. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. That's awesome. It's a gift you have, but it's the awareness when you bring it, yeah. that level of awareness when you start to bring it to the table, then you're going to be able to borrow the tools that you have access to mm-hmm. in a more intentional instead of reactive way, you know, like, right. you know, like Jared, when you get into those conversations, you're going to be like, I'm going to, I'm going to set a little timer on my watch for two minutes where I say no mm-hmm. words. <laughs> You know, oh, like, like you know what I mean? Like, so you can just yeah. like, I know my tendency when I enter this conversation yeah. is going to be to like fix it right away. Cause I'll say like, that's a nine ish tendency too. Mm-hmm. Cause we like peace. Mm-hmm. We like wholeness. I'm going to glaze this over for you. I'm not going to actually mm-hmm. fix it. I'm going to make you feel like it's fixed mm-hmm. in my like compulsive way. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so giving I need that with my wife. Yeah. <laughs> giving, giving <laughs> yourself some tools to say, I know what my compulsion is. I know it's coming from a yeah. place of fear, desire, And I know that I can still achieve what I want from a place of security and wholeness instead of from Mm -hmm. uh, a compulsive, uh, self-serving kind of way. Because when it gets down to it, a lot of that stuff ends up being self-serving if we just keep Mm -hmm. peeling back the layers of it. So it sounds like you guys are on a like great journey of just like challenging yourself anew in those areas. It's hard work. It's hard work, but it's worth it. (laughs) <laughs> it hurts. It hurts. It hurts a lot. <laughs> so like, it's funny too, because like at church we have CR, celebrate recovery. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And so there's small group, and one of the rules of CR small group yeah. is we don't fix one another. Yeah. Right. And so like I just sit there and I'll listen to a room full of twelve <laughs> men tell all of these problems and things that they're doing. I'm like, I, this is hard. I, I, yeah. I want to say something. Though, you know, yeah. the rules say I can't. And your solution's based. So that's <laughs> probably so good. And so hard for you. <laughs> Congratulations. It is, hard. It is on very that. hard. Yeah. I'm like, man, I, I think I know how to fix this. Yeah. Yeah. But I can't tell them because the rules say I can't. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, I and respect them. right. And that's coming from a place of like, you have to learn it for yourself, you know? And I think, yeah. Sorry, we need to start wrapping this up. Okay. But I will just say, like, as a type two parent, like, you know, as your kids get older and whatever, and mm-hmm. you have to start inversing mm-hmm. that, like, I, you guys have young kids right now, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, like, you do everything for them. You have to do everything for them. It's right. just part of it. One day, that kid is going to have to learn to tie his shoes on his own. Like, that's where I'm yeah. at right now, right? It was like, if my seven-year-old would just practice tying his shoes, it would make my life so much easier. Um, but like, it's just easier for me to just take care of it. But what does that yep. do? That's yeah. not. That's actually a long-term, a short-term service becomes this long-term disservice. So right. being able mm-hmm. to sort of yeah. like split those two and and be able to look past the immediate discomfort to the long-term yeah. empowerment mm-hmm. is a challenge for a type two because you you want there to be growth without struggle. Yep. Yeah. But, you know, that's not usually how it works. Yeah. So, right. yeah. That's yeah, not it's tricky. Life. <laughs> right. That's I think my I think my oldest son might be a top two because he's he's basically a small me. Yeah. That's and it, it's frustrating to argue with him because he has all the, the solutions. He knows it all. Mm-hmm. Like it's I think he's a blossoming too. That's fun. <laughs> a blossoming too. Blossoming. Love it. Love it. Hey, so, okay. So I don't want to us to leave this podcast without you guys telling us a little bit about your podcast. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, I want you to give do me, all the self promo. Yeah. Give me a little, little faith and oh, yeah. faith and frames promo. Uh, and, uh, yeah, cause it's awesome. You guys do a great job with it. So thank you. We appreciate yeah. that. Easy with the G word. <laughs> we do a job. We yeah, do, we a, do job. a job. It's great. It. It's a fantastic <laughs> job. Take Take your your adjective out of there. Uh, yeah, so Faith and Frames, we, we'd wanted to start one for a long time, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Uh, partly in 
uh, partly because we're twos, I guess. We wanted to wait till everything was perfect. We had the the revenue to to do it, the time, the, the all of these things. Uh, you ultimately, did. Ultimately, that never came, and so we just decided we'd do it anyways. Yeah. Uh, and so we have. <laughs> essentially leveraged ourselves in saying we're going to do a weekly episode. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so like we, it's, it's a challenge at times uh, we batch shoot them, but uh, having, having that hard, like Monday mornings or Monday evenings, we're going to have a, an episode release, you know, come hell or high water. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. It, it's, it's nice to have that pressure, so to speak, to make us do it. Um, but yeah, faith and frames, we, there's really not a good theme. Uh, initially, it was uh, we wanted to share elements of our faith. Uh, yeah. and cameras we, and Jesus. <laughs> yeah, cameras and Jesus. Uh, last episode, we talked about 8 Mile and Jesus. Nice. And uh, drew a parallel there that yeah. probably shouldn't have been drawn. But uh, <laughs> I think it carried some weight, though. I think it I think it ended up happening. So, yeah, it's a, it's a podcast where sometimes it's just Garrett and I. Mm-hmm. Uh, we try to have guests to just broaden our... Our, our listeners' ears, expose them to mm-hmm. something that maybe they'd never heard of. Uh, and yeah, so we just want to be a light and hopefully along the way, let a little bit of our personality shine through. Yeah. Nice. Love yeah. It. I've enjoyed it. I, I'm behind, but I watched um, the one with Bo most recently. And that, yes. yeah. that was great. Bo was fun. Yeah. Email marketing, man. Email marketing and blogs, they are not dead. Yeah. Yeah. Bo was fun. That was fun. So, and you guys have some cool resources too that I feel like. You're trying to, you know, like the create Appalachia, uh, yeah, yeah, the co-working, the co-working space. space and stuff like that that you guys are working out of. Those guys are awesome. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah, it's it's really cool stuff. And thank you guys for taking time today to yeah. be with us. Uh, so thank you for having us. Yeah, yeah. Because it was it's <laughs> weird being on this side. Time. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. It was fun. Yeah, you guys so, did great. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Appreciate but it. But yeah, so go check out Faith and Frames yeah. and subscribe to them and. If you have nothing better. Get your dose of Cameron Jesus. (laughs) Cameron Jesus. Well worth your time. Here we are, four people terrible at self-promotion. I know, right? Look at that. We're so bad at this thing. (laughs) Are are nines and twos both bad at that? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I would... Yeah. Mm -hmm. We struggle. Again, self, who's that? What? Why do I need to tell people (laughs) about me? I don't... don't, Gotcha. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. I could see that being difficult. We're learning. Prove me wrong. If you guys feel like self-promotion comes naturally... (laughs) It doesn't to me. Garrett, ha- Garrett has a sales the background. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's, he's a little, little better at it. from the three. So I'm the three is a little bit more of a performer. Yeah, and yeah. your sales background too. I feel like probably helps yeah. you there too. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. That, that would stretch you. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, uh, I have no shame. I have no shame. That's that's my <laughs> biggest issue. Is I'll I'll put it out there. Yeah, nice. I love it. I love it. Well, well yeah, thanks. we'll put everything in the show notes yeah. for where to find these guys. 100%. So the show notes. Thank you guys. Thanks guys. Show Appreciate notes. Appreciate it. No one reads them. But yeah. All right, guys. All right. Well, that's it. That's our conversation with Jared and Garrett, yeah. which you can say a lot faster. I, I, I've said ones. it for more months. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I'm walking into a tongue twister when I try yeah, to say their names it's okay. quickly. They also admit to that, like, that is just the case for many people, that yeah. it is hard to get it all out. Their clients so. are like, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, They're good with it. Yeah. So thanks to those guys so much for joining us today. Uh, it was a lot of fun. We will have all of their information down in the show notes, their mm-hmm. website, their podcast, yeah. places where you can follow them. And while you're there, go ahead and hit subscribe. Yeah. And give us a rating review so that people can find us. Uh, And as you know, probably by now, we're on YouTube now. So feel free to go subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. We'd love to have you guys building up our subscriber base there. You can watch all the episodes that we have from this current season. Yeah. Um, all of our old episodes are also there. Yeah. They're just that was a fun surprise for also me. audio yeah. only. So, you know, you don't have to do it do it there unless mm-hmm. you just like to listen mm-hmm. while you drive. Oh, hey, and uh, sign up for Work Like a Nine working group. Yeah. We would love to have you. Um, when you're listening to this, the last time we talked, we talked about AI. So yeah. we're talking about current events yeah. in practical, helpful ways as a solopreneur. To use those things. And yeah. you could do that at entrepreneurs.com. Yeah. So. Awesome. Thanks for listening. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.